Hello friends, I'm David Bose. Today is August 4th, 2016. It's great to see everybody today. Well, I've got an interesting subject today. Um, let me ask you guys something. And I'm very serious about this. I have a question for all of you to ask yourselves. And perhaps you could ask this to other people if you go about your daily routine at work or wherever. But I'm asking, do you think that if we knew that someone was a mass murderer, would we elect him as president? Is there any way possible on this earth that we could ever elect someone that is known to have murdered several people that seems to have no conscience? A person who... Now, I'm not talking about somebody who killed in self-defense or, or even somebody who actually went out and murdered somebody and then, you know, uh, confessed to it and somehow was repentant or something. I mean, I suppose that could happen. But what about, you know, and of course, I don't think we would, <laughs> probably wouldn't qualify to become president if he had murdered somebody, he or she, even if he apologized. If it was only one. What about a mass murderer? Would we, could we, is it possible that, the, that enough people in this country would come together and elect a mass murderer as President of the United States? Most of you, I'm sure, would say no. I don't think that's possible. Do you think then that if I could prove to you that the Clintons had murdered people, not just one person, that Hillary and Bill Clinton literally murdered, mass murdered many people, would you then, no matter who you are, if you're a Democrat or some kind of a, a progressive or a liberal, would you still vote for Hillary Clinton? Now, I'm not saying you got to vote for Trump. I'm just asking you if there is any way on God's green earth you could possibly find it within your heart to vote for a mass murderer or even a person who had murdered and apologized for it. I don't think any of you would say, yes, I would do that. Well, I'm about to give you some information. I'm sure you've heard it, but I want you to listen very carefully to this information and see this information up close. And before I give you this other information, I want to ask you another kind of a question. I want to put it another way. Um, what if we were electing a president and the only choices you had was two and there was absolutely no other choice you had to vote for one of two people only these two that was all they allowed you to vote for and what if one of the persons that you were allowed to vote for on the let's say conservative side the republican nominee was ted bundy the mass murderer and let's say that on the Democrat side, their nominee was Jeffrey Dahmer, the uh, mass murderer Jeffrey Dahmer. And these two had been convicted, as they have, and, and, and you know, everyone knows that they're mass murderers, and, and we know this, and the public opinion is absolutely clear. We know who they are, they've all been convicted, and these are the two that they present to us to vote for. Would you then vote for them? Now remember, they're the only two people you have to vote for. There is no other possible vote. You can't vote for Gary Johnson or anyone else. The only person you're allowed to vote for is one of these two. Would you then vote for them or would you simply say, no, I will not vote at all? Well, I still think that most people, when put that way would say that they would just not vote at all. I think that's what would happen. Well, did you know that Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton have murdered many people? And I know that that sounds like, well, Dave, you're making assumptions. And listen, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about this information. It's not like most of you have never heard of it. But I guess because they've never been convicted we think, well, they're not convicted, so we can go ahead and vote for them. Number one on my list, and I got this list off the internet, and you can probably go find this 
on your own. There are larger lists out there. Uh, perhaps hundreds of people were murdered. But I'm going to stick with the smaller list here because this should do the trick because I think if they had killed even one person and if we can, in your mind, if you think that any one of these people actually were murdered by Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton, then I think that all of you should absolutely not vote for Hillary Clinton this coming election. James McDougal. A lot of you have heard of James McDougal. Clinton, the Clinton's convicted Whitewater partner. He died of an apparent heart attack while in solitary confinement. He was a key witness in Ken Starr's investigation and knew all about Whitewater because he was involved with it thick. He said, well, maybe the Clintons didn't kill him. You know, we don't have proof. All right, number two, how about Mary Mahoney? She was a former White House intern. She was murdered in 1997 at a Starbucks in Georgetown. And it happened just after she was to go public with her story of sexual harassment in the White House that she was going to level against Bill Clinton. Perhaps just a coincidence. Number three, Vince Foster. He was a former White House counselor and colleague of Hillary Clinton at the Little Rock Rose Law Firm. and He died of a gunshot wound to the head and they ruled that a suicide. Well, he knew all about Whitewater and had all that information that was needed to convict Bill and Hillary. And not only Bill and Hillary, but some very elite people would have gone down had he survived. Then there was Ron Brown, the Secretary of Commerce. He was the former DNC chairman. It's been widely known that he had a big argument going on with the Clintons and he died in an airplane crash. A pathologist close to the investigation reported that there was a hole in the top of his skull which he believed was a gunshot. And at the time of his death he was being investigated and he was speaking publicly all over the air that he was willing to cut a deal with prosecutors. C. Victor Razor II and Montgomery Razor were major players in Clinton fundraising organizations. They died in a private plane crash in July of 1992. And by the way, everybody else that was on that plane that Ron Brown was on died. And then later on, sometime later, the air traffic controller, very, very coincidental, probably just coincidence. Number six, Paul Toule, or Tooley. He was the Democratic National Committee political director. He was found dead in a hotel room in Little Rock. September 1992, after a serious argument with the Clintons, described by Clinton as a dear friend and trusted advisor. Well, number seven, Ed Willie, Clinton fundraiser, found dead November 1993, deep in the woods in Virginia. He had a gunshot wound to the head, and they ruled that also a suicide. Well, here's the thing, friends. Ed Willie died on the same day after his wife, now you probably heard of this lady, Kathleen Willie, claimed Bill Clinton groped her in the Oval Office in the White House. So Ed Willie was involved in several Clinton fundraising events and was also the husband of Kathleen Willie. Now I don't think that these coincidences that just keep racking up could all just be coincidences, friends. Not anybody that I've known has died around me in a mysterious way. Now I, I suspect that you know this might happen more often if you're in public life but why should people be dying around you in mysterious ways? Somebody killed these people they didn't all die of suicide. Number eight Jerry Parks head of Clinton's gubernatorial security team in Little Rock. He was gunned down in his car at a deserted intersection outside Little Rock. Park's son said his father was building a dossier on Clinton. He had allegedly threatened to reveal this information after he died. The files were mysteriously removed from his house. Wow, another coincidence. Just mysteriously removed. James Bunch, 
died from a gunshot. They ruled that a suicide. It was reported that he had a black book of people which contained names of influential people who visited prostitutes in Texas and Arkansas. Although the book was seen by several persons, it suddenly disappeared after that. Number 10, James Wilson. He was found dead in May of 1993. He had an apparent hanging suicide and he had a lot of ties to this whitewater deal thing. Say, well, maybe it was other people, you know, involved with this whitewater, whitewater thing. Could have been McDougal or one of his friends or one of the elite or whatever. Granted, granted. But you see, here's the thing. Bill and Hillary Clinton were involved in this and Vince Foster and James Wilson and all of these people end up dying and there's there, there there's friends there's so much more to all of these stories you've got to dig into this a little bit yourself investigate it if somebody told you that the, the, the presidential nominee might be Ted Bundy wouldn't you at least investigate before you voted for him I can't give you all the information in this video but I'm going to give you the basic information. Number 11, Kathy Ferguson, ex-wife of Arkansas trooper Danny Ferguson. She was found dead in May of 1994 in her living room with a gunshot to her head. It was ruled a suicide. Another suicide. Even though there were several suitcases laying there, all packed, as if she was going to go somewhere. But she never got to go. Because uh, she decided to commit suicide. Danny Ferguson was a co-defendant along with Bill Clinton in the Paula Jones lawsuit. Interesting. The Paula Jones lawsuit. Kathy Ferguson was a corroborating witness for Paula Jones. Wow, what a coincidence. Number 12, Bill Shelton, Arkansas State Trooper and fiancé of Kathy Ferguson. We just talked about Kathy Ferguson. Critical of the suicide ruling of his fiance see they said that his fiance had died of suicide and you know he he found that to be pretty hard to believe see so he also then was turned up dead in 1994 he had a gunshot wound and they also ruled that a suicide even though there wasn't any powder burns on him 13 gandy bow attorney for clinton's friend dan lassiter died by jumping out a window of a tall building in January of 1994. His client was convicted. His client was a convicted drug distributor. Perhaps he jumped out. Or perhaps he was pushed out. Florence Martin, accountant and subcontractor for the CIA, was related to the Barry Seal Mina Airport drug smuggling case. He died of three gunshot wounds. Suzanne Coleman reportedly had an affair with Clinton when he was Arkansas Attorney General, died of a gunshot wound to the back of the head, also ruled a suicide, was pregnant at the time of her death. Hmm, I wonder whose child that was. Good reason to murder her, right? Can't have any children lying around that, you know, don't have fathers and, and uh, you know, that would be kind of untidy and he had a long political career ahead of him. Number 16, Paula Grober, Clinton's speech interpreter for the deaf from 1978 until her death, December of 9th, 1992. She died in a one-car accident. She told a friend that Clinton made advances at her. Very similar to a lot of other women who claimed that Clinton had groped them or had made advances or, you know, raped them. And number 17, Danny Casolara investigative reporter investigating Mina Airport and Arkansas Development Finance Authority he slit his wrists apparently in the middle of his investigation before his death he claimed to have found a shattering story involving the Clintons I'll bet he did and I'll bet he didn't slit his wrists friends in fact I'd be willing to bet you that he didn't slit his own wrists but I'm not a better I'm just one who tells the truth friends and uh, it's it's very very sickening and it's appalling and I think we should wake up number 18 Paul Wilcher attorney investigating corruption at the Mina Airport with Castle with the 1980 October surprise was found dead on a toilet June 22nd 1993 in the Washington DC apartment 
had delivered a shocking report to Janet Reno three weeks before his death, but that shocking report was never made known. They sort of made it disappear. Number 19, John Parnell Walker, Whitewater investigator for Resolution Trust Corporation, jumped to his death from his Arlington, Virginia apartment balcony, October the 15th, 1993. He was investigating the Morgan Guarantee scandal. Boy, this Whitewater scandal's probably involved with other scandals that we were never told about, and I wonder how we never got to hear this information. Probably because all the people that knew anything about this either jumped off of balconies to their death, shot themselves in the head, or slit their wrists. Interesting. 20. Barbara Wise, Commerce Department staffer, worked closely with Ron Brown and John Hong. Cause of death unknown. Died November 29, 1996. But her bruised, nude, naked, beaten body was found locked in her office at the Department of Commerce probably did that to herself, you know. That was probably her way of committing suicide. We, we'll never know. And they're not going to investigate it, friends. You know, all these people are turning up dead surrounding the Whitewater or Paul Jones or Kathleen Willie or, or, you know, all these people come up dead and nobody invests, investigates. And if they do, they simply say, oh, it was, it was suicide. I'm sure it was suicide. Because you see, the judges are in on this too. They pay them all off Anybody in these top positions and judges and attorneys and all, you know, they're all involved. 21, Charles Meisner, Assistant Secretary of Commerce who gave John Hong special security clearance. He died shortly thereafter in a small plane crash. The plane had been tampered with. See, a lot of planes go down and they don't care if there's other people in the plane either. Number 22, Dr. Stanley Hurd, chairman of the National Chiropractic Health Care Advisory Committee. He died with his attorney, Steve Dixon, in a small plane crash, again tampering with the plane. Dr. Hurd, in addition to serving on Clinton's advisory council personally, treated Clinton's mother, stepfather, and brother. Hmm, a lot of appreciation there, huh? Number 23, Barry Seal. He was the drug-running pilot out of Mena, Arkansas. Number 24, Johnny Lawhorn Jr., mechanic, found a check made out to Bill Clinton in the trunk of a car left at his repair shop. He was found dead after his car had hit a utility pole. Apparently, he was dead before the car even hit the pole. Number 25, Stanley Huggins, investigated Madison Guarantee. His death was purported suicide and his report was never released. Number 26, Herschel Friday, attorney and Clinton fundraiser, died March 1st, 1994, when his plane exploded. A lot of planes going down unexpectedly. This happened two days after his argument that he had with the Clintons. Number 27, Kevin Ives and Don Henry, known as the boys on the track case. Reports say that the boys may have stumbled upon a Mena, Arkansas airport drug operation, a controversial case. The initial report of death said, due to falling asleep on railroad tracks. Later reports claim the two boys had been slain before being placed on the tracks. Many linked to the case died before their testimony could come before a grand jury. Now, I'm going to go through a list of names real quickly. And the people I'm going to name all had information on this Ives-Henry case. 28, Keith Coney died with his motorcycle, apparently slammed into the back of a truck. Uh, 1988. No one saw the accident and the bike was not damaged. Hmm. 29. Keith McCaskill died stabbed 113 times. November 1988. 30. Gregory Collins died from a gunshot wound. January of 1989. 31. Jeff Rhodes. He was shot, mutilated, and found burned in a trash dump in April of 1989. 33. James Millen found decapitated. However, the coroner ruled his death was due to natural causes. Because people just die of decapitation every day. That's just a natural thing to have happen. Number 34, Jordan Kettleson was found shot to death in the front seat of his pickup truck in June of 1990. Number 35, Richard Winters, a suspect in the Ives-Henry death, was killed in a setup robbery July of 1989. The following people that I'm going to mention are bodyguards that were 
Clinton bodyguards, and they're all dead. Number 36, Major Williams S. Barkley Jr. The 37, Captain Scott J. Reynolds. Number 38, Sergeant Brian Hanley. 39, Sergeant Tim Sable. 40, Major General William Robertson. 41, Colonial William Dinsberger. 42, Colonial Robert Kelly. 43, Special Gary Rhodes. 44, Steve Willis. 45, Robert Williams. 46, Conway LeBleu. 47, Todd McKeenham. So, there you have it. There's a list of just about 50 people. We can't prove that Hillary or Bill killed, personally killed any of these people. But, many of these people were involved with Bill and Hillary. And we can say pretty confidently that they probably know what happened. And they haven't said anything. So that's just about as bad because, you know, when you go to court, if you know about somebody being murdered and you don't stand up and you don't, in other words, you're an accomplice to the murder. So Bill and Hillary probably did not shoot any of these people. I mean, they were governors and presidents and, you know, first ladies and secretaries of state and so forth. So they didn't have to. These are powerful people that work for the highest elite in this country. They can hire people. They had bodyguards and they probably also had individuals that they used to murder these people. Not every one of these people were murdered directly because of Bill and Hillary Clinton. Some of them may have been murdered because of accomplices of Bill and Hillary Clinton's in the Whitewater case. But this, all of this and all of these people that we, we mentioned had something to do with Hillary and Bill. And if you can't even imagine in your mind that even one of these people was murdered by the express will and intent of Bill and Hillary Clinton, then I'm going to just flat out say you're insane. And if you're still going to vote for Hillary, I will say, in addition, you're, you're crazy. Not only are you crazy, but you're a murderer. Now you've become an accomplice. The entire country, half the country that's voting for this woman, if this is the case, which I find very hard to believe, but if there's even 20% of you that are actually going to vote for this woman, you're all murderers and thieves, you're all insane, you're all absolutely lost. And I feel very sad for all of you. Because when Ted Bundy becomes president, he's not going to be a good president. You know, a lot of you probably say, oh, well, you know, I don't know. Uh, he's really good with business and uh, he's very qualified to run companies and they've got all these connections and, you know, we we'll want to have a cool hand at the helm there, you know, because Ted Bundy's going to have the control of that red button. So, you know, uh, actually, Ted Bundy was pretty, you know, calm under fire and uh, really? Is that what you're going to do? You're going to come up with a bunch of excuses for Hillary Clinton. If you even knew half of the stuff that she she's done. I mean, these 50 people or maybe hundreds of people that she directly was involved in murdering isn't even the tip of the iceberg when you consider ISIS. She created it along with, well, okay, let, let's not give her that much credit, friends. I'm sure she's not the mastermind of the takeover of the world in the Middle East. I'm sure she has some handlers and she's just a puppet. But she is a ignorant puppet who is culpable and blatantly responsible for the murder of many Christians who were beheaded if indeed this actually happened. We saw people being massacred and bombs going off in the street in 84 in France and and you know and people here in America being killed and murdered by terrorists and so forth and they're all claiming to be working for ISIS but of course this woman this this scary laughing shark is actually responsible for creating ISIS one of the puppets responsible Obama is also responsible they went into Libya they brought that down they put uh, weapons and you know, they, they ran weapons through there so they could put those weapons in the hand of a little group called ISIS so they could start this mass murder all over the country over there and bring people to their knees. And that's not the only thing that Obama and his administration and Hillary Clinton has been involved in. You've heard of uh, the Fast and Furious? That's just as big because, you see, actually it's bigger. Mexico is actually a bigger country than Iraq. has more people 
and bigger economy. And the reason the mafia runs Mexico, and we, we see we don't have a name for the mafia over there. We don't call them ISIS or, or you know, we don't got a real name for uh, these people. But you see, by just calling them the mafia, it makes it sound like, oh, well, there's nothing we can do. They're organized by the CIA through the instigation of very high up elite. They have a reason for putting these mafia in charge of Mexico. They funnel guns down in there and put them into the hands of the drug lords in Mexico. That way, the United States, through the CIA, runs Mexico and keeps that country in utter confusion. And we're making all these billions of dollars by running drugs across the border. This keeps the prisons in business, the judges, the lawyers. This keeps people insane. It is the worst diabolical insanity that's ever been thought of in human history and Hillary Clinton's part of it and I'm sorry friends and so is Obama they are the masterminds behind the most hideous plot ever to be leashed upon this earth and that's just Mexico and Iraq friends we haven't even gotten into Venezuela and Argentina and Brazil the whole country down there in Brazil is falling apart. You know, what about, you know, back in the days with Reagan and Clinton, we, the Bosnia, there was that Kosovo thing, there was uh, Grenada, there was, you know, back many years before that, we had Cambodia, Vietnam, Korea. All of these things, we could name them all one by one. Over the centuries, millions of Africans have starved to death was a concerted plan by the elite. Friends, look, I know none of you want this kind of evil in our world. But here's the thing. If you don't wake up right now, this is your last warning, America. If you intentionally vote another one of these puppets into office, without first using your brain and going and doing some investigation, because I know you surely wouldn't do this if you knew what was going on. But the sad thing is I think most of you do know. I'm sure you know about the emails. I'm sure you know that the emails are just a cover-up for all the things that they did to build ISIS and all of their corruption that's going on over there. I'm sure you know that it doesn't take a trillion dollars to run you know, the military. That at least half of that money is going into the pockets of these elite. You must know that their little party has been great fun and they've had a good time but the party's going to come to an end very soon and everybody in this world who has participated in any way shape or form knowingly willingly and irrationally whether it's just that you decided to vote for these people knowingly will be held accountable please friends for the sake of humanity, for the sake of love and freedom, and the Constitution of the United States of America and all of our souls, please do not vote for any of these elite puppets ever again. The truth has come out. You all know the truth now. And if you know of anybody who does not know what's going on, please get the word out, friend. This is David Vos. I'm going to sign out, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.